Hey, what's up guys? So in this week's episode of Five Minute Fridays, I want to address two common misconceptions about laser jammers. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, naming. Typically they're referred to as laser jammers. Uh, some companies refer to them as something else. Escort calls them laser shifters. K40 calls them laser diffusers. Um, and usually this is done for marketing purposes or they're saying, oh no, 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 these aren't laser jammers. These are laser shifters. Or no, 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 these are diffusers, totally different. However, they're actually the exact same thing. They actually operate in the exact same way. If you take a look at how any of the laser jammers operate, uh, we've got a laser gun, any gun like this. You'll notice they all have two lenses in the front. One will be used to uh, transmit the laser signal. It'll hit a vehicle, it'll bounce back into the laser detector, and it's just monitoring the change in distance over time using that to calculate speed. Um, I actually have a video that you can watch. It explains how laser guns work and also how laser jammers work. I'll link to those down in the video description. And so that's the idea. You've got a reflection coming back to the laser gun. Uh, then there's the uh, laser jammer head or shifter head or diffuser head, whatever you want to call it. You'll notice there's typically a couple bubbles here. You'll have the laser detectors, the sensors right here that are going to sense when you're getting shot. And they can also tell which gun you're being shot by and how the incoming pulses are coming. So then it knows how to, well, return fire and jam that specific gun. So you'll typically have like a laser transmitter as well, which will then fire back at the laser gun and confuse it in such a way that it prevents the laser gun from being able to get a speed until you disable it and allow it to operate normally. Now, whether they call it a shifter or a diffuser, it's all doing the same thing. It's seeing what a laser gun is doing and then responding back in a way that prevents the gun from getting a speed. Now, because they call it different things, sometimes I see people come up with like weird uh, attempts to explain why they call it different things. One of my favorites was uh, somebody saying the way that a shifter works is, uh, let's say this is a car and this is the laser beam coming towards the car. The laser shifter will then shift the light around the car so it doesn't actually return back to the laser gun. Let's ignore the fact that this completely defies the laws of physics. I mean, a mirror could redirect light, but you can't just bend light around like this. You know, And these things, they're not mirrors. They're laser detectors, or a laser detector on this side, and a laser transmitter here. That's what they're doing. There's no ability to shift the light around a car or anything. It's, it's marketing things, you know, just to try to differentiate themselves. And so laser shifters, uh, De not detectors, jammers and uh, diffusers, they're all the same thing. So let's just kind of clear up the, uh, the naming terminology thing. Uh, now the second thing on a related note I'd like to talk about is uh, the concept of really bright uh, laser transmitters. This was something that I was personally confused about. When I was first getting into this, I hear uh, blinder and I was like, oh, okay, the way that they work is they blind a laser gun. They transmit such a bright signal that, well, the laser gun can't see its own reflected signals and, well, it can't get a speed. And there are some laser jammers that use uh, brute force, a lot of power coming out, but even these ones are not intended to uh, blind jam or laser guns in such a way that it can't see a signal. It's just sending so many signals back, or so many return pulses, that it's just hoping that, you know, some of them land at the time when the laser gun is looking for the return signal. But even those ones that transmit a ton of light, even those ones are not based on blinding, like visually just making it too bright to where the laser gun can't see the signal. Um, and the reason I bring this up is from time to time I'll see uh, certain laser jammer manufacturers advertise, oh, we use really bright uh, laser transmitting diodes or look at the output wattage of our diodes. And I'm like, well, who cares? That's not actually that relevant. If it's sufficiently bright to be able to get the signal back to the laser gun, you're gonna be able to do the job. It's actually more a question of timing than it is brightness. And you also gotta remember that uh, when a laser gun is being shot, the signal has to travel through space, hit your car, a little bit of the signal gets reflected back and comes back to the laser gun. And so the reflected pulse is gonna be much weaker than the transmitted pulse. And then conversely, the laser jammer on the other side, this is gonna be full power going all the way back. So it's not actually that hard to get enough power back to the laser gun. And so it's really not a question of like blinding it in such a way where you have a really bright signal. It really comes down to timing and when specifically the return pulses make it back to the laser gun and then slotting them in when the laser gun is expecting a return signal and you just do some funky stuff with shifting around the timing of when those pulses are coming back and that creates the jamming function that we're all looking for. And again, for more information about how the jammers are working with this timing stuff, you can watch the videos in the, that I've got linked in the video description and it goes over a little bit more technical information. But uh, yeah, to summarize, laser jammers, shifters and diffusers, they're all the same thing. Uh, none of these things are defying the laws of physics <laughs> in order to shift pulses around a car or diffuse the signals or anything like that. Uh, it just has to do with timing, not 
output power. Even the ones that transmit a lot of light or the ones that advertise uh, you know, very bright output diodes. None of that stuff is actually relevant when it comes to uh, implementing laser jamming functionality. So there you go, a little bit of technical stuff for us today. So hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions and things you're wondering about with countermeasures as well. These are always fun to talk about, uh, especially once we get into some more of the technical stuff. That's personally what I love to do. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.